So, uh, welcome to my little talk about making Raspberry Pi with eTrice. Uh, I'll give a brief introduction about what is eTrice, and uh, then we dig right into the software development with eTrice, and I'll make a little example programming a Raspberry Pi, which I have here, um, with a simulated hardware, but you can do the same with uh, any kind of protocol on a, on a real hardware system. But it's hard to fit a machine control or machine, physical machine in here, so I made a similar record uh, thing here. So what is um, what is eTrice? Um, just a brief update for those who, who do not know the project. The eTrice project provides an implementation for uh, the, the room modeling language, real-time object-oriented modeling. Um, we provide runtime and code generators for Java, C++, and C. Uh, it's all based on Eclipse, uh, so the uh, usual Eclipse modeling things like XTEX, XMF, <coughs> and so on. Uh, yeah, our guiding principles, I think in this community, I do not have to focus on that. Uh, so, Petras is a modeling toolset for event-driven concurrent real-time systems. Uh, that's a stack we're sitting on, so Eclipse Platform, uh, EMF, Xtext, Graffiti, Extend, so Xtext for the textual grammar, uh, Graffiti for the graphical uh, um, user interface or for the graphical editors, and Extend for the transformations, code generation, and so on. Um, one of the basic features, you can model structures uh, with uh, so-called actor, actors, uh, by using containment and layering, two different uh, ways, orthogonal ways to structure your system. Um, for the communication, you can define protocols. It's basically a bidirectional interface um, for asynchronous or synchronous communication. And, uh, with the, and you attach those to the ports, so every port has a protocol attached and it's clear what can be communicated there. Um, then we have behavior modeling with hierarchical finite state machines uh, for the event-driven behavior. You also can place manual code inside an actor or any other implementation if you provide an interface for that. Yeah. Um, the development, uh, the deployment um, enables you to deploy uh, each actor class to a node or to a, to a thread. Uh, we're not through yet with the complete features, so currently we can deploy inside an application to different threads. Uh, we can model the, the, the system de de deployment as well, but uh, we're not through with the implementation yet. And last but not least, uh, to support reuse and variants, uh, we can inherit uh, basically every modeling element, including the behavior, finite state machines, you can inherit them and add states or change things there. Uh, that's a very convenient way to, uh, to uh, add standard behavior, for example, for components and things like that. Um, so, what does the tool chain look like? Uh, you model the structure and the behavior of your system, then you generate the code, C, C++, Java. Uh, you bind it to a library, a runtime library, for portability and, and for all the aspects you do not want to generate, because they are it's basically a very, very small middleware. Middleware sounds big, so I avoid this term. It's basically a portable portability thing. And then you compile and deploy it to your target. Uh, by the means the target development compiler or whatever provides. Um, and then you can debug it uh, by, for example, visualizing the, the generated message sequence charts. More graphical debugging stuff uh, is in progress on a model level, but uh, yeah, that's the first thing we have now. Um, an example from real life. So this kind of automation control system, this small system, um, we develop with eTrice, but also bigger systems, for example, for the production of those compressors. Uh, we also do automotive systems with it, and uh, yeah, in a couple of other domains. But basically, everything you you have where you have concurrent event-driven behavior is uh, applicable. eTrice is applicable to. 
um, example from reality that was a drawing I got from a, from a mechanic or from, 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 a, from the guy that constructed the machine. Um, and he said, okay, there's a cylinder, there's a cylinder, and uh, there are parts, and there are other parts. And he explained to me what this uh, machine should do. And I derived, uh, for example, this structure from here. You can see all the cylinders really are cylinders in my control. Uh, so that's a basic element in machine control, so we use, it. We use this uh, all of the time. And then, of course, the explanations I made up uh, the state machine to describe the behavior. And then you generate the code and it runs. Let's say for, for a behavior that's this simple, that's really exactly how it works. Uh, that's, uh, there's not much more, there's not, no manual code in there. Um, yeah, what do we have today as an application here? Uh, the demo application we have, I have on my laptop, I have the e uh, uh tool set. I developed this and deploy the, uh, the software, uh, in this case Java. I use Java because I wanted to wrap the MQTT protocol of the Power Project. Uh, that's very convenient to do in Java. Um, so I deploy the application to Raspberry Pi and I control a simulated traffic light uh, on, my, on my laptop over TCP IP. And in the end, I want to download, I get to the point actually, takes a bit of time. Uh, I can publish the, the values or some, some values over the MQTT protocol by the Eclipse Power Project to the Eclipse Sandbox server, MQTT server, and there we hopefully will be able to see the, the results on that. Yeah, um, so, so much for the theory. Um, let's get started with the demo. I already fired up the Eclipse uh, development environment here. Um, first um, of all, I yeah, I want to start the, uh, the traffic light simulator. It's a Java application with a socket server. So that's that's my traffic light here with the car lights and with some pedestrian lights. And that's what I want to control. So, of course, I do not every single bit from scratch now, but uh, I, I use uh, pre-configured uh, or predefined uh, uh, parts. Um, you can reuse them. So, uh, the basic structure in an application is you start in a subsystem and you, by double clicking, you dig into the, the, uh, um, the actor class and you start to refine the, the structure and the behavior. So what, where I'm going to start now is uh, I'm going to drag in, first thing we need TCP IP client. So I drag in the TCP IP actor. So that's just a wrapper in room for a TCP IP uh, client. You can basically do the same for any interface you have. That's a very convenient way to reuse things. Uh, so um, TCP IP. Um, client, then I drag in the uh, traffic light interface. It's just an interface that ha handles the protocol to the traffic light. It's an ASCII protocol. It could also be something like uh, Modbus or yeah, whatever we use for, uh, for automation. So I named this traffic light interface and as we see we have a couple of ports here and of course they have a TCP IP control port to configure the TCP IP socket and the payload port. Yeah, and now I'm basically able to control this traffic light over this function interface here. Now let's have a look at this interface. I'm going to dig into the uh, manual or into the textual notation for the protocols. Here you see uh, this port we saw in the graphical representation as a textual representation. And here you see the protocol. And the protocol to the traffic light, basically, uh, it, you can initialize it and you get it initialized back. And then you can, can say all the things like pedestrian light red and, and so on. So that's the definition of the protocol. Um, and now I need something to work with. So I define a, uh, an additional actor class. So that's a, that's a really simple little project. So the setup is not so easy with 
rewiring everything to the internet here and so on. So if, if at the end things do not show up, please forgive me. I know it works, but uh, the setup is a bit tricky here. Yeah. Um, especially the, the, the connection is not very good, I have to. Um, okay, so I define a new actor class. I immediately drag it into my graphical representation here. And yeah, now I, the, the only thing I have to add now is uh, I need a port, an interface port to connect to the traffic light interface. So I name this traffic. I go back in the structure and I wire the, the two ports. I can only wire ports that are compatible, of course. And now I've set up the structure for the, for the project. So basically, we have everything in the structure in place. We have the hierarchical system. We, have, uh, we know who can communicate what with whom. And now we need some behavior. And for behavior, I use the standard mechanism here in room, which is a finite state machine. I, uh, yeah, first we have to initialize the interface. So I define uh, initialize uh, state and I send a message to the traffic light. So that's the port I defined just a minute ago. And I see all the, all the available messages here. So double click and I can, you can see that I sent the message uh, to the other uh, actor to initialize it and when it's done I'm initialized so I get the answer from the traffic port I get the answer initialized or request or whatever I did in this case I initialized so I get back initialized and the transition triggers the, the, uh, uh, the state change to initialized okay so uh, the communication is established um, now, and now, of course, we want to see something. So um, I want to add some commands here. So I want to set, for example, the pedestrian light to red, uh, just to see something. Um, yeah, that's basically the behavior. So it's just it's all about sending and receiving uh, um, messages uh, or. or sending and receiving also function calls and things like that. Um, so the next uh, thing, one little thing is missing. Um, I have to... I have to add the configuration. Let me check, I wrote something wrong, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, you're able to configure instances of, of classes in your hierarchy. So it's a tree and you can configure every element, every attribute or whatever. And you can generate it for smaller systems that's hard-coded. For C systems in the automotive sector, you hard-code such things because there's no space. And uh, for other systems, you can load the variables dynamically and things like that. Um, so that's basically what we want to achieve so I configured it to the IP address of this computer so that the Raspberry Pi can connect with my computer here. So I generate the, the code. It's basically a launch configuration that calls the, the, the code generator of eTrice. And yeah now first I, I, I let it run on uh, on the on the host on the on the laptop. Um, so this should be this one here. Oh, no. Sorry. Let me check here. Yeah. This should be... Okay. So, what we see here, that the traffic light now turned red. And when I quit the application, it goes back to the status uh, zero. So, yeah. A lot of effort for uh, <laughs> simple, simple light. Um, so let's do something more sophisticated. Um, the, the next step would be to provide um, a blinker. For example, when I'm initialized, I want immediately to, to start the traffic light with blinking to, to avoid accidents and things like that. So let's, let's do that. Um, now that's the wrong one here. 
So you see, I can switch between the textual and the graphical representation. We do not have a gra graphical editor for everything, but for the, for the two most important things, we have graphical editor, but um, yeah. So I go to the graphical editor again. Uh, yeah. um, and I change the controller again. So what, what we want to do now is, in the initialized state, I want a blinker. So there are two things I have to do. First thing, I have to create a substate machine. Hierarchically, state machines are very powerful for uh, hiding details and uh, making things a bit simpler. So I create a hierarchical state machine, so a substate machine, um, with an entry point um, to go immediately in the state on. When I enter here, so I want to go in the state on, and we need a, another state off. Yeah, and uh, one step up, I have to rewire this here, because the standard behavior is not implemented, so I go directly to, to this transition point and go directly into on. Uh, and now we can uh, we can add, uh, for example, pedestrian light red, and and we want the car light red, and in the exit code. So if we're not in the on state. Uh, we want the pedestrian lights off and the, and the car lights we want off as well. Okay, so uh, so what's missing here is uh, we need a timeout. So yeah, let's, we have, have a couple of uh, um, elements in our um, in our model level library. It's it will grow uh, in, in the future a lot because we are about to open source our model level libraries for machine controls and there will be more stuff so that's the start of, of this uh, uh, what we currently do uh, I go into the subsystem which represents basically the Raspberry Pi and uh, and I add an actor a timing service which is a predefined service we deliver um, and add it with the layer connection to the application. So now everybody in the application is able to use uh, um, a timing service. So next step uh, is that we fire up the timer. Oh no, first we have to create a port. That's basically the uh, a port for a service. It's called service access point. You can access with the service access point. You can access the service I just uh, integrated, so I define a service access point, I name this uh, timer, and here you see the protocol, I just use the uh, P timer protocol, so now I have a port uh, with a timer, and then the behavior, I fire the timer, I start, you have cycling timers or, or, or one-shot timers, and I start the timer with 1000 milliseconds and I do the same here in the off state because I want to ping pong it and now I define when the timer sends a timeout then I go into the off state start the timer again and go back if the timer yeah, sends another timeout I go back. Yeah, and that's my blinking behavior. So that's changing behavior, and now we want to deploy it to the Raspberry Pi because that's what it's all about. Um, so I generate the code. And um, I created a little, little ant script to build a jar file. And so to pack it together so I can download it and start it on the Raspberry Pi. So this should be, yeah, that's the right time here. I deploy it to the Raspberry Pi over SSH. And so I l I'm already logged into the Pi. And I start the application. So let's have a look at the 
at the traffic light here, I start the application, and now it blinks. Yeah, so, success. <laughs> um, the, so now it, it really runs on the Raspberry Pi. Of course, you can do the same with C. To be honest, I avoid to, to C in, in, in demos because it's just more wiring things and linker and, and all this stuff. It just, just takes too much time for, for, for a demo, but you can do exactly the same thing with, with C or C++. C++ is still a prototype, but uh, with C and Java you can work. Um, so that's, um, that's how we deploy it, how we run it on the target. And once one thing is still missing, we want to have a look at the running application, or we want to analyze what happened there. So I, uh, here is the message sequence chart that was uh, created on the target. So that's, that's the one here. I copy it to my Eclipse workspace, update, and I start another open source tool that, uh, that uh, shows the message sequence chart. It's just an ASCII file we generate from the running software. You can either, like in this case, put it directly to a file, or we have for C and C++, uh, we have infrastructure where you can actually buffer it and, and uh, yeah, for, for not, not killing your hard real time systems. Yeah. Um, yeah, and here you see, uh, that's exactly the system I built. So I built a TCP client, I, uh, the, the interface, the controller, and I added the timing service. Here you see the instance pass and so on. And here you see exactly what happens. That's an incredibly powerful way of debugging your application. Uh, a lot of people ask us, why didn't you do the animated state machines first? That's nice to play, that's nice to learn, but for real applications it's not worthless, but you know, if you have hundreds of, of actors out there in a concurrent real-time system, you don't want to stop something to, or you don't want to, yeah, it's so fast that you basically, the animated state machines are in most cases worthless. In this case, we're hard real-time capable and, and can, can have a look at the uh, post-mortem or whatever at the, at the application, what happened there. So that's exactly the states of the, of the actors and the messages I sent uh, in both directions. Okay, so last but not least, that's the tricky part now because internet is involved here. Uh, yeah, in embedded systems it's sometimes <laughs> not so clear. Um, okay, so what I want to do is I, I created um, a Paho wrapper, as I mentioned before. I drag it in or MQTT wrapper over the Paho implementation of MQTT. So I named this MQTT actor and it already has an interface. Um, you can uh, connect, you can disconnect, you can publish and you can subscribe. So I reduced the interface to something I, I need usually. Uh, um, so that's, um, that's that one. And now I add to my controller an interface port with a traffic interface, uh, no, uh, MQTT, that's not the traffic interface, the MQTT interface. Okay, I connect them. So the only thing I have to do now is I have to start the, uh, the, the or I have to connect the MQTT. So I have a little cheat here because I can't remember all the, uh, the IP address <laughs> and the stuff like that. So hope you forgive me not to do this live here. So, um, yeah, we, we, want to, we want to add um, another step, MQTT in it. <coughs> I rewire my state machine here. I send a message to the MQTT. Uh, server, the connect message here, but I already copied that one, so this should work. Okay, and when I'm connected, I get a message back from the MQTT wrapper and it says connected. Okay, so basically I, I, I only added this in, uh, initialization step and, um, and yeah, what we want to do is we want to add 
we want to publish something over the MQTT protocol, for example, the initialized state. I want to say mqtt.publish and then that's that's the that's the uh, set of parameters we we need uh, that's the name of the, the variable on the on the I know I don't know if it's the right term there uh, and uh, that's the me message no that's the content of the message I think is this Java code you are writing, or is that? Yeah, that's that, that's Java code. Uh, we don't have uh, well, we have a room implementation language, but it's not ready to use yet. It's been a Google Summer of Code project, and we yeah, we we need to work on that for a while to to make it really integrated. But here you can uh, you can add Java code or in with the C generate the C code. So that's the regular thing so tools. Um, of this kind do, but we want to extend it for uh, for, for for modeling and uh, for for model checking purposes and for convenience. We want our own implementation language and for portability and things like that. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, now I published the initialized state, and now comes the risky part. Um, now I deploy the thing again to the to the Raspberry Pi. No, that's not right. Something didn't build. Oh, it didn't generate. Of course, you can automate this. The things I do manually, I just do it manually to show that it's really s simple steps, yeah? and you can easily automate this with a. Uh, uh, with an ARM script or with a make file or something like that. So next, uh, yeah, I'm going to deploy it now. Yeah, now the time changed. So, and now I'm going to start it on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, it, it does something. And now I start the the HTTP bridge for the M2M Eclipse thing here. And here should be somewhere each rice demo and play a bit with it. And not nah, bugger. Okay, didn't didn't publish the thing. Traffic light. So maybe I, I got the wrong the wrong one. I don't know. So hope you forgive me as there's no time to, 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 to look for the bug, but it works uh, as you can see. Um, yeah, there are basically five minutes left now. Um, I want to to end the the live demo and give you a brief overview of the uh, or a hot look of what's what's next. So the next um, uh, thing we will do in yeah in one month or so uh, the release zero point three. So we're still in the incubation phase. So forgive us a couple of bugs we still have and things that might not be completed or so. But we use it for production in certain areas. So. Yeah, we are on the right way. Um, we have first C++ prototype provided by the company Drega Medical, uh, and um, data configuration model. We are about to integrate the Google Summer of Code projects from last year, um, and uh, we have first version of the physical mapping model, so the deployment model, basically. Um, and we want to consolidate uh, consolidate our current features. In the next steps, we have another Google Sum of Code project this year. Uh, Google is very generous with our project, it seems. Uh, and um, yeah, we want more model level debugging, more model level support for distributed systems, because that's one of our core things we do. Uh, more detailed documentation generator, abstract execution for the for room and expression language. That's the model checking part. So those are all things that we have. I don't know, 500 more wishes <laughs> out there. Yeah, so that's basically it. I still have five minutes, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, any questions? Any questions, suggestions? So people are actually using the Raspberry Pi in production, the critical production systems for 
not not in our production systems. No, that's. Uh, but actually, we, we hope this up to uh, just to for the fun okay. to a real production system because we use Linux with uh, a real-time kernel patch for production systems or industrial PCs with a big metal case and everything robust. And it's about two thousand euros such as such as a system. And we just wanted to make fun of. Of some of the guys, and we hooked up this Raspberry Pi and let the application run and work. So, complete production plant, 30 meters by 20 meters, ran on this Raspberry Pi. And the machine, and actually, it has more resources than the computer we put in there five years ago. Yeah. So, this was really fun. <laughs> but we, we will maybe we will make a video about this uh, sometimes. You know, taking out the big case and putting in the Raspberry Pi. Like yeah. So, actually, the Raspberry Pi is just from from the robustness uh, of the hardware and, and things like that. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily use it for, 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 for a critical production system. So, yeah? But of course, it can do the job. Yeah? Uh, I have no experience with it. Yeah. If you have a box full of it, you can replace it as you want. <laughs> yeah, of course, you can create a redundant array of Raspberry Pis <laughs> to, to do the job. Of course, you can. Yeah. Uh, but but I think it's it's an excellent platform for playing around and and, and learning things and, and trying things out, you know? especially because the form factor is, is so nice. Yeah. yeah. During your demo, there was a quite a delay between the two red lights turning on, even yeah. though they seem to be the same line, two lines of code. Where does that delay come from? I mean, uh, it's it's just a TC, those are two TCP/IP packages that 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 go over. This here, over the Windows router, or if the Windows something bridge uh, to the to um, now not to the internet directly to the computer, and uh, I sh I would have to analyze it, but it's TCP/IP, it's not not hard real time, so you have a millisecond or so, and then maybe on the other side we have another delay or so. So in our hard real time system, uh, so that's not that's not the problem of the generated code, sure. it's, it's a complication. So we, we can go down with the generated code. We have systems in the nanosecond, 500 nanoseconds reaction time, uh, but they are in C or C++, and they are, well, those are really specialized hardware uh, solutions, of course. Uh, it's not, with a, with a Linux PC, you can get about 300 microseconds that can be skipped, or 200 or 100, depends on. Uh, and, and it tries for in the U to have this hardware time. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Thanks for your attention. Hope you had fun.